Hey guys, it's Danny. Today I discovered that one of my orchids has a bit of a mealybug infestation and I really have to address it before it gets any worse. And I thought it would be great to take you guys along and show you how I go about these guys because luckily for us, they're not the worst pests you can have. And especially when you don't have a big infestation, it actually is really easy to stay on top without actually going out and getting all sorts of toxic insecticides and stuff. I'm gonna show you with pretty much household things how you could control a smaller infestation. So I'm gonna show you how the bug looks like, a few things about it, you know, how it behaves, what its hobbies are and all of that fun stuff. And obviously I will take you along in treating this orchid. So don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it and it's useful to you. And hey, why not subscribe? I post multiple times a week. Righty, so let's just start with showing you the little monster. Warning, it's kind of cute. It looks like soft white cotton balls. And especially if you just ordered your plant, you might think, oh, maybe just some residue from cotton or packing material. Oh, no, no. It is actually a pest that will feed on your orchid. Don't be fooled by the cutie appearance because actually it is related to the scale. It's pretty much the better looking cousin, <laughs> if you will. But just like the scale, it is a pretty pesky little creature. The good thing is it's big and you see it. It is fuzzy, white, two or three millimeters in length. And the good news is even the young ones, they are pretty visible. They're tiny white dots, maybe not as fuzzy, but definitely visible on your plant. So because they're white and easy to spot, you first see the insect and then the damage, which is good because they don't have time to actually damage your orchid. The bad things with mealybugs, in my opinion, are two. One, it likes to crawl around. So infesting other plants is really, really easy. It has no issue walking on surfaces and just going about your entire plant collection wreaking havoc. And it doesn't walk slow either. If it wants to walk fast, it will. And second, the worst in my opinion, they can actually also burrow in the root system. And this is especially valid with epiphytic orchids. Since we typically pot them in very airy mixes, usually bark mixes, inside the root ball, the atmosphere is very airy, very fresh. So these guys are not suffocated by soils. They're not constantly surrounded by water. They actually have a very good life in the root system and they will eventually colonize the root system as well, which makes it a little bit harder to treat with non-systemic, non-toxic means. Pretty much spot treatments, what we will do today, because you might treat the foliage and all of the outside, let's say, of the orchid, but the infestation will keep coming back because you will always have nests in the root systems. So a good treatment includes the root system as well, which is a little bit of a pain, I will have to admit. And this is why it's really important to take care of an infestation before it gets worse. So yeah, just like any other pest, it's not a good idea to let it untreated because they can actually do quite a lot of damage. But another good thing is that they are easy to treat. They don't have a hard shell on top of them like other insects. So they are susceptible to an array of treatments, even alcohol. Yes, even household alcohol. If you manage to get them really wet, all of these substances will reach their bodies. So in the end, it's really not all that hard to get rid of them. It might be a little laborious, but the faster you catch them, the better your results will be. So today I will take care of this infestation that I have on top, but also I will repot the orchid and check the root system as well, because this orchid, again, does not have a date, which means it has been potted more than two years ago, has no slow release fertilizer. The bark looks kind of old. It's not really degraded just yet, but it looks like it needs a refresh. The sphagnum moss doesn't really look all that great, so in this case, it's a good idea to actually repot the orchid as well. If you find mealybugs on your orchid, first of all, absolutely get it away from your other plants. Treat it however you like best, but if you don't know yet and you wanna try household means first, treat the top first and keep your orchid or plant quarantined and see if it comes back. If it doesn't come back like within a month or so, chances are you don't actually have anything in the root system. So you don't necessarily need to repot. If you only have one or two mealybugs, chances are you don't have them in the root system as well. And also if you think you can suffocate them by soaking the root system, Mm, that works so and so because since they are very fuzzy, they can actually create a sort of a bubble around them. If the water doesn't have a surfactant, it means that the tension created around the pest 
will keep air there. So I personally don't feel like trying to drown them is a good approach. If you use something with soaps, with things of the sorts, these are surfactants, they will break the tension of the water and they will reach the millibug, but water alone, I don't think works all that much. But hey, you can absolutely try it, why not? Right, so first off, I'm going to go ahead and treat the top of the orchid and then I will repot it. Okay, my orchid is not very stable, it might fall <laughs> during this video. But anyway, first of all, I wanna take care of the ones that I see. To do so, I like to use isopropyl alcohol. In many countries, this is known as rubbing alcohol. In my country, I have both normal ethyl alcohol, but also recently isopropyl, finally. Isopropyl is not as drying as ethyl, but it is a little bit more dangerous for human health. <laughs> this is not the type of alcohol we drink. Actually, the other one, the ethyl one, is the one contained in you know, alcoholic beverages, not this one. Do not attempt to put this on your tongue or anything, okay? However, for plants, this one is just slightly safer. I have a 70% solution here, and with the sorkit, I'm just gonna spray it out of the bottle like this. The reason is because this plant which is a serrato stylus, has a very thick cuticle. The foliage is protected by a thick outer layer, let's say, which makes it far more resilient to applying substances on the leaves. It also doesn't absorb substances, not nearly as fast as, let's say, a velvet-leaved plant. So for this particular plant, I find it pretty safe to use the alcohol as it is. So I'm just gonna spray these guys that I see. There we go. Just to make sure that I don't miss anything. Typically, when you have a congregation of mealybugs, you will have some young ones as well. And those ones can fall on the medium and all around, so I wanna spray them rather than just get them manually. Now that they are sprayed, I can actually go ahead and remove them manually. Okay, now that these ones are taken care of, the next thing I wanna do is remove the dried flowers. You might have noticed in the close-ups that this orchid has a lot of dried bits. Well, some of them are sheaths, which are normal for this type of orchid, and I'm not necessarily gonna try to remove them. But most importantly, I have a lot of dried flowers. This is the type of orchid which produces many, many flowers very close to the leaf joints, which don't really fall on their own. They remain on the orchid, and in time, they just pretty much disintegrate as they break down. So these are pretty safe to remove. Let me show you. There you go. This is the low flower. These are safe to remove. The other sheets, these guys, I don't wanna mess too much with them because they do actually protect the stems and some of the roots as well. So I'm gonna clean up the orchid. I'll come back when I'm done. Alrighty, I'm all done. Let me get you in a little closer to show you what I did. So I only removed the spent flowers. This particular orchid is a little bit more tricky because it does have a lot of sheets that, as hopefully you can see in the footage, do protect roots. I see a root being exposed here. Those sheets should be left alone. Everything else, it's a good idea to remove because it can actually harbor these pests. They do like to hide themselves in all sorts of nooks. Sometimes I found mealybugs in the little clips of the flower spikes. So it's a good idea to just remove all of these leaf remains just so you see if there's any mealybug hiding in there. In my case, I just wanna wait and see what happens. I'm gonna separate this orchid because I actually didn't see any other mealybug hiding in all of these sheets. I think it was just a very, very tiny infestation. So I'm gonna let it be, I'm not gonna spray anything. If I see them coming back, I'm gonna go to my mineral oil solution, but not alcohol. Alcohol only on the leaves, and sometimes, as a last resort, on the more fleshy flowers, the waxier flowers. A typical fluffy Phalaenopsis flower will probably be affected by alcohol, but a sturdier waxy flower can actually be pretty okay with alcohol. And if you have no choice to remove a severe infestation from flowers, use alcohol as a last resort. At least you don't have to throw away the flowers before they fall on their own. Now, when it comes to other types of orchids, for example, some podials, let me get one. There we go, let me show you my recovering little cat Leia. When it comes to these guys, definitely remove these dried sheaths. If the sheaths are still green around the pseudobulbs, let them be, don't remove them, don't touch them. They still do participate in the formation of the pseudobulb. But if they are dry like this and you have a mealybug infestation, 
just peel them, remove them. And on pseudobulbs, you can actually go with alcohol as well. If you're afraid it's gonna touch the roots, then spot treat it with a cut and bud on the pseudobulb. It's okay, the pseudobulb is a waxy thick formation as well. You're not gonna damage anything, most probably. But remember, with these types of orchids, mealybugs can actually hide in these sheaths. So it's a good idea to remove them before treating the orchid. All right, so let's unpot the orchid. I am not pre-soaking the medium. The reason for that is that it's very messy <laughs> when it's wet. And I don't think I need to pre-soak it because the bark that I use is a smaller grade bark. It's easy to remove from the roots. That being said, this particular orchid, again, is a little bit more special than others in the sense that it has very fuzzy roots. They attach to everything very, very strongly. So even if you would soak the pot, you wouldn't necessarily resolve much because it's not about making them more flexible at this point. It's about those little hairs that will attach to everything and water doesn't usually help the hairs remove. They will just get pretty damaged and that is that. So hopefully we're gonna make the least amount of damage possible. And oh boy, this medium doesn't smell so good. Yeah, a repot was definitely necessary. All right, so luckily for us, I actually don't see mealybugs in the root ball. Maybe the fact that the roots are just so fluffy, it's a little bit more suffocating for the mealybugs. Not sure, but I think we are pretty good. I don't need to stress out the root system more than I already did. I also removed quite a lot of dead roots and a lot of spoiled medium. Now, if you find mealybugs in the root system, do not use alcohol you can actually use hydrogen peroxide 3%. And in the vast majority of cases, you'll be absolutely fine. Things like Cattleyas, Phalaenopsis, Oncidiums, Dendrobiums, Vanda, all of these are pretty great with hydrogen peroxide. However, this orchid is a very special orchid. Let me give you a close up. I keep saying it's a special orchid, but do we see what I'm working with here? Do you see how fluffy and just very fragile these roots are? Yeah. These guys don't have your typical velamen that most orchids have. The velamen itself is actually a layer of dead cells. They're not affected by hydrogen peroxide because they're already dried. These guys though, these are different. So if you're working with a ceratostylus, I would not go for hydrogen peroxide. I actually use peroxide on slipper orchids as well, which have fuzzy roots and they're okay, but they have much, much sturdier roots. This one is the only orchid in my collection I would not use hydrogen peroxide on. And I think you can see why. Other than that, other orchids are absolutely fine. And if you have a mealybug nest in the root system, typically hydrogen peroxide takes care of that as well. Alrighty, so I'm gonna clean up my tray and come back with a new pot and fresh potting mix. Alrighty, so for this orchid, I will be using my typical mix of bark and sphagnum moss. It is the mix that I had it in before as well. And if you wanna know what products I use, you can visit the description, scroll down. I do list the products that I use right there. The circuit also had a bamboo skewer. We're gonna replace that. I'm gonna talk a little bit about these bamboo skewers because I'm sure some of you guys have some questions about them. Well, let's just pop the circuit real fast and I'll tell you about them. Excuse my birds, they're in that mood where they sing to each other and they cuddle each other, all that fun stuff. So I'm alternating sphagnum moss and bark like usual. This gives me the, let's say, evenest, that's not a word, the most even humidity levels in the pot. The idea is for all of these sphagnum moss layers to be connected to each other so that they can continue to wick the water from the bottom all the way to the top. The bark is used as aeration, nothing else. It doesn't feed the orchid, doesn't necessarily even give the orchid a place to hang on to because as I was saying, I'm using finer grade bark. The pot is the one that gives the attachment surface. So bark is just aeration for me. Second to last layer of my mix is sphagnum moss. And let's just add a bamboo skewer because this orchid does not sit. It is a special orchid. Did I tell you it's a special orchid? 10 times already in this video. On this layer, I like to add my slow release fertilizer because 
it is staying moist and as I pour water through the pot, the nutrients go down. Since orchid potting mixes are typically very, very airy, it is a good idea to place this guy on the wettest, let's say, part of the medium. And in my case, it is the uppermost sphagnum moss layer. And on top of that, we finish off with a bark layer. This prevents light from getting to the sphagnum moss and also prevents algae from forming, which, trust me, they form in my environment in three seconds. And there we go, the orchid is potted. I want to add another bamboo skewer to lean this growth on. And let's just add a clip. There we go. I would rather not have this orchid become pendant because it is very, very top heavy. All of these leaves are very succulent, as you can see, and they are very heavy. It is not a light orchid. The pot itself and the medium is super light, but the orchid is kind of heavy. So there is a chance it's gonna topple over because it becomes very top heavy. So I prefer to stake it a little bit like this rather than letting it pendant for now. I'll see in the future how I wanna grow it, but for now, this is a much safer system for her. I'm gonna cut the excess bamboo skewers. And hey presto, look how pretty she is. Now, before we end this video, let's address a little bit the bamboo skewers. Bamboo skewers are something I used on my channel since the dawn of man. <laughs> I've always used them if you look through my videos because they're cheap and they do the job. However, I have a lot of comments asking me if the little green mold and eventually the blackening of the bamboo skewer will affect the roots. And the answer is no. I have never seen any bad effects of these bamboo skewers. I know they are prone to attracting that bluish greenish type of mold. That is absolutely fine in my opinion. I've personally never had issues. And with the blackening, this is just the wood breaking down, rotting pretty much. It's gonna happen and this has been in there for two years. So it's not gonna happen overnight. It's gonna take a while for this to completely disintegrate. But by the time it is completely disintegrated, you would have to repot your kit anyway. So I would say don't worry about the little molds and breaking down of these guys. Right, so I'm gonna go water my plant. Let's not forget the tag. I got into the habit of writing the date of adding the fertilizer <laughs> to my tags because I need to replenish it once a year. And sometimes I forget the year of repot or the year of adding fertilizer. There we go. So I'll be right back after I water my orchid. And we are done. For this orchid, I chose a little bit of a taller decorative pot because again, this orchid is special and it's top heavy and the more support I have, the better. And at the same time, I'm not making it heavier than I have to. This is a metal decorative pot because it sits on a glass shelf. <laughs> Anyway, bottom line, mealybugs, they can be taken care of by a whole lot of substances, starting from alcohol, ending with horticultural oils, even neem oil. If you like neem oil and you don't have a big infestation, I think you can do good with that as well. Since they don't have that protection shell, quote unquote, let's say, many substances can actually get to their body. And if that can happen, then you can use a whole lot of things on them. I prefer to use alcohol because I have it, it's really easy, but keep in mind, alcohol, it's a desiccant. Do not use it on sensitive things, such as very, very fresh new growth, no matter the orchid. Very, very fresh, tiny new leaves, tiny new growths. I would not use alcohol. Also don't use alcohol on roots, especially if they have growing tips because they can burn. You can use alcohol on very thick leaf, Phalaenopsis catleas, even on cidiums. That is quite okay. And as a last resort on flowers as well. Always keep an eye on the root system because mealybugs are quite tricky. But other than that, I find them really, really easy to take care of. And with that said, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Hope you learned something new. And if you wanna know more about how I keep pests generally in check, do visit the description. I'll link you to my pest control video. I don't like to use harsh chemicals. I like to use soft chemicals. Everything is a chemical, water is a chemical. So I'm more on the soft non-toxic chemicals type of a growing strategy. So if you're interested in that, do check my video down below. And with that said, if you wanna keep in touch with me on social media, just search for me. I am at Miss Orchid Girl. Most importantly though, just subscribe to my channel. I post multiple times a week. So with that said, I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.